they protect the football, they win the game. Second down and 12, ball on the 18, and here's a wild one as Barman tries to toss it to Cornish as he escaped the wrath of Chris Harrington. Well, there's a difference between a throw, a toss, and a shot put. That was a shot put, and it wasn't very good. The shot put it right over his uh, tailback, John Cornish. First down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Whether you order a big screen TV or a comfy chair, it all ships for just $2.95. Shop and save at Overstock.com. So third down and 12 for Kansas here. Still plenty of time to go. 7.26. See both teams tightening up just a little bit here. I'm right here. Bar the shotgun. Cornish beside him. Lamb split on the near side here. Incomplete. Find the nearest KU player. The bunch of Aggies circling like vultures, covered by Melvin Bullock. Yeah, trying to tie it in. First, anyway, ball thrown short. Kansas led this one 10 0. A lane touchdown made it 10 7. And then KU with Webb, a pair of field goals sandwiched around a safety. And 18-7 before McGee's two-yard run made it 18-13 on the first play of the fourth quarter. Now back to punt it is Kyle Tucker. Low snap, poor kick. He shanks it out near the 35-yard line, and the 34, it appears, is where it's going to mark. And we talk about field position. Tucker, that's been the bugaboo for the most part, has kicked the daylights out of the ball, but when he's been bad, he's been really bad. Yeah, and when you have a bad punt like that, it just really, really upsets him. There's there's fine coming in late, getting on the other side of the field here. I don't know if that's upset his rib, but, you know, everything's just pretty much in place there. You snap the ball back, and he's got to execute. you got to drop that ball, punt him like you've done it every time in practice, and make a good effort. He knows it from the outset that it's... Bad, uh, bad 16 yards is all they get on the kick, so it's first and 10 Aggies at the 34 of Kansas. Javorski Lane, stiff arms one man, he's to the 25, and slides down to the 22-yard line as Lane gets 12 yards on the pickup before Webb finally pulls a halt to it. Pretty nifty 275-pounder, don't you think? Gets outside here on the inside draw play. Watch him do a little face stiff arm there to Jerome Kemp. He's on the outside around the corner of the defense. Not your average speed for a 275-pounder. He's been averaging about 13 carries a game. That's just his eighth carry today for 43 yards. But he does have a TD, and it's first and 10 at the 22. Fake to Goodson. McGee faking nobody out, though, and he is brought down hard. A loss on the play. The Kansas defense trying to answer the challenge, and James Hold, a sophomore, Altus, Oklahoma, makes the play. I'll just defense here, pursuit here, Justin. Hold comes underneath the tailback. Doesn't for the fake, and he's just going to fall to the quarterback and does a nice job of just going to him. Quarterback was going to come back, and I think probably drop it down to the tailback, but the job by Holt finishing the play. Pushing him back, trying to get him out of field goal range as well, if you can. Just a and m knowing they'll still plenty of time. They want to get some kind of score here. Second and 15. And McGee overthrows Goodson. Goodson had a little room to roam out there. I'm wondering what's happening to Martellus Bennett. Not into the mix here for Texas A&M in the first half. He had some pretty good production for this football team, and we saw that going on. And really wondering what happened here, why he's not in the game plan. Third and 15. 27. McGee, they got him! Oh, mama, did he get rocked at the 35-yard line. Blakesley with the sack for the Jayhawks. I think about Kemp with that hit. Well, it's going to be a safety blitz from the weak side, and Jerome Kemp's going to come here. Nobody's going to touch him. He runs right by the running back who steps underneath, and no protection there for the quarterback, Steve McGee, and this has got to hurt, folks. Lucky he did not dislodge that football to get away from him. Good 
presence there by Steve McGee of holding on to a huge play here for KU. And McGee had the concussion last week. It's fourth down and 23 now. McGee. That's a time, and he delivers across the middle, and this one is knocked loose on another hammer shot as Bennett got knocked away from it by Rivera. Wow. Excellent timing here by the linebacker, Rivera, on the throw to Martellus Bennett coming down the field, and watch this, folks, right there. Bingo, he catches the football. Nope, going to get that out of there. Big Martellus Bennett, he's actually bigger than the linebacker, Rivera, but uh, good collision here, dislodges the football. got this crowd juiced here as KU takes over on downs and it's first and 10 from the 35 clock running with 454 53 to go first and 10 at the 35 yard line and this advantages the offense KU on the change of possession the clock starts and Cornish and let's check in with Mike Goldberg and a Dr. Pepper game break. Bill, thank you very much. Bottom of the hour, number two, USC is at home. They have won 25 straight conference games, 28 in a row at the Coliseum, led this season by John David Booty, who's thrown three touchdowns in three of his first four games played at Washington. USC, bottom of the hour. Oh, well, we're going to get an Arkansas update there. I don't know if Billy Ray wants to get that in. He's holding all the information to himself. We need a Billy Ray update here. That's for right. Find out what's going on with Arkansas. the mic, longer. Mike. <laughs> Second down at six. Ball on the 39 here as KU is trying to put away the Texas A&M Aggies and keeping it on the ground as Cornish moves it five yards. Made him taking a timeout here, Bill. Going to try to conserve as much time on the clock. But heck, this is going to be a tough thing for them to do. They got second and uh, third and one, it looks like. The timeout is called. Concern on the face of Coach Fran with his club down 18 13. The 23 flavors in every Dr. Pepper add up to so much taste. 23 is always on the tip of your tongue. And so, at the end of the 23rd quarter, it's all tied up 23-23. X is the square root of Y. True or false? Karen. 23? Dr. Pepper. With 23 flavors and one mind-blowing taste, there's more to it. The best in Texas just got better. Now get bonus cash plus low financing on most 2006 models in stock. Every qualified customer is eligible for $2,006 in bonus cash and 2.9% financing for 60 months, regardless of your credit score. You get more than two grand cash plus 2.9 APR on almost every 2006 in stock. Explore, Expedition, F1. You can save thousands on the best in Texas. This limited time offer ends October 2nd. Visit your Texas Ford dealer today. Oh, there, Sparky. If you're used to hot dogs, you may tend to over-condimentize your brats. See, dogs get all their flavor from the outside. But when you got a fresh, juicy Johnsonville brat on the bun, the flavor is built right in. A kiss of mustard is all you'll ever need. Welcome to heaven on a bun. Welcome to Johnsonville. Eighteen thirteen, Kansas, 3.46 to go. Jayhawks have the ball. Uh, what a burger, what a play. What a play it is. And what a call it was. Mark Mangino elected to go with a fake punt. He does here to Big Andrews to get this play down to the front, to the inside the five-yard line for the first score for KU. And huge play early in this ballgame. Tucker with the pass to McAnderson. 48 yards considered a pass play. And that set up Kansas' first touchdown. Fields got a TD pass from Barman. Their only touchdown. And it is third down and one. And nothing doing. It doesn't look like they're going to call a timeout here. Let's check in with another Dr. Pepper game break. Well, guys, you asked for it, and you have it, Gary Reasons. Arkansas at number three, Auburn. Both Darren McFadden and Felix Jones have rushed for over 100 yards today. Houston, Nutt, and Arkansas about to sweep both Alabama and Auburn for the first time since 1998. About 3:10 left. Arkansas leads 
Uh, Billy Ray has got to be happy in the studio. <laughs> he wants to do that game break, I tell you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right. As a Houston nut happy there, right here, the Aggies get the big defensive stop, call a timeout, 3.38 to go, fourth and one. Well, what do you do if you're Mark Mangino? Do you punt it? You bet you do. You don't go for it for fourth and one. You're trying to get it. Field position is key right now, and you want to make Texas A&M go as far as you can down the field to perhaps get a score. They need to get a touchdown to get in, you know, to get back in his ball game. So you want to take them to the full length. So there's no, not even a thought process here for Mark Mangino to go for here on fourth down. And A&M going to come after Tucker. He shanked one last time for 16. Or you try to set up a return. There's a couple of things you can do. Set your return up. You got Schrader back there going to field the punt return, and he's a speedy guy, and he can get some yardage that way. But also, you've seen a punter here just has kind of an up and down kind of an afternoon with the, with Tucker. He threw the ball for a completion. He's punted it very well inside the 50, but when he's trying to leg one out, hasn't got a got a hold of one yet today. Well, yeah, he's was saying, hey, forget all our woes. Get the ball, go score, we're going to win the football game, fellas. You bet. I mean, for all that's happened here today. Kansas, though, huge defensive stop last time. Let's see what happens here, though, on the punt. Fourth and one. And Tucker. Wow. Oh, he just pounds it all the way into the end zone. That was a 60-yard punt. Yeah, so... <laughs> Officially 56 and oh, the four into the end. Yeah, do that. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line, and that's the Aggies. 3:31 to go. They only have one timeout remaining now. And you see the results here. The second half possessions for Texas A&M. The one touchdown there. Really nothing else. The the negative play there. The safety obviously was was huge in this ball game because it gave field position to, to to Kansas. But now with a chance to you know get up on top of this ball game. Three and a half minutes to go. The ball at the 20-yard line, they got to take the length of the field. So here's McGee. There, he's 18 to 35 for 165 yards today. You've got Lane back there in the backfield with him. Lane with eight carries and 43 yards. Taylor to about the 20. 7-yard line. Let's see if they change their posture here, get up the line of scrimmage and call the play from the line and move a little quicker. It looks like the kind of a half huddle, so so to speak, for Steve McGee. Taking time here now. That, that clock is running. Should be running. Yeah, it is. Yep. Not really too concerned about the time, it looks like. Second down and two. McGee, incomplete. And once again, Kansas making some hits. Talib on Schrader that time. Well, I think Schrader lost his ball before Talib got there. Good throw here by the quarterback, Steve McGee, get it out there. I don't think Talib contacts him before the ball pops out of his hands. Sure does. He's lucky he's turning upfield, trying to get moving before he catches that football. So a third down and two or three yards here for Texas A&M. Schrader, superb athlete, and that's uh, good hands, too. That's a rarity that uh, he would not hang on, especially for a senior. And it's third down now. 2.43 to go. And McGee completes this one out to Riley. And that will move the chains. He got just enough. Riley comes up hobbling just a bit. And you saw this player in the ball game. He comes up and goes outside. And he lays it down there to him. It's all out blitz that time by KU. Wanted to make that quarterback throw the ball. Without any opportunity, does a good job of getting it out of the backfield. Lock moving again. First and ten at the 32 of a &M. Watch out. And the pressure on him again as Jerome Kemp had that bone-crushing sack earlier. He had delay safety blitz. Jerome Kemp on the near side of the field is going to take a hesitation. Here's Jerome Kemp back here. He stops, and he's going to go inside of the defensive end who comes up the field. He gets in a B-gap, and good contact there on Stephen McGee. Makes him throw a bad ball. And second and ten now. Clock does stop. 2.22 remaining. One timeout for Texas A&M. Kansas with an 18-13 lead. Last couple of plays, defensive coordinator Bill Young to choose him to put pressure on Stephen McGee. See how he calls it here. Taylor broke a tackle. Dives forward. Gets near the 39-yard line where Justin Thornton of the Jayhawks, redshirt freshman from St. Joseph, Missouri, the tackler, but a seven-yard pickup. 
And a third and short. They're going to call it third and three here. Again, pressure inside there. And a good job of the protection up front for Texas A&M, allowing a quarterback to stand in there and throw that football. Inside two minutes to go. McGee to Bennett. And the first down, Texas A&M. And Bennett got out of bounds to stop the clock with 1.50 remaining. Now, taking the ball down the field in three or four and five yard chunks is not the easiest thing to do, but it's getting first downs here for Texas A&M. Still got plenty of time, a minute and 50 left to go in this ball game. Steve McGee has shown that he's poised and comfortable back there from the quarterback spot and making these, these reads. Kansas has been blitzing on every single down here, trying to put pressure on them, and they're forcing their defensive backs to be one-on-one -on -one all over the field with these receivers. Kansas never beaten a and in Big 12 play. They've lost all four previous meetings. a and owns the series 6-1 overall. This one incomplete. No! He hangs on for the football. It was nearly incomplete, nearly an interception, and then a completion. Well, this is a zone coverage here by the defense. I hope you can hold it back there just a second. Right there. Hold it right there, guys. You see what's going to happen? That linebacker goes here, and then you got the receiver comes inside where the linebacker vacates. Good throwing lane there for the quarterback and great concentration by Schrader. Yeah, you know after that last one, he comes back and makes a heck of a play. First and ten after Schrader making the catch. And McGee again delivers to Joey Thomas this time. Tlaib makes the tackle. 125 remaining. The Aggies moving it well. They have one timeout to go. The ball now at the 40-yard line of Kansas. Well, if you just draw a line about five yards out from the defensive end at the top of the field or five yards deep, you just draw a circle there. That's where that's where Steve McGee is throwing that football on every single play and just getting three and four or five yards of the puck. Second down and five now for Texas A&M. Dvorsky Lane back there with McGee. Complete. Riley couldn't hang on as he got hit at the impact moment there. Stuckey with the play. And good job by Stuckey contacting him there so he doesn't pull that ball in. Riley bobbled it. Well, third down again here for Texas A&M. Steve McGee has been completing these third down passes on this drive. So we're trying to throw another short one here perhaps to get that first down. We've got one timeout left in this ball game. Third and five. Here they come. He unloads, and Riley's got room to roll. 25, 20, looking for a block. He's at the 10. Riley out of bounds at the six, make it the five-yard line as Webb kept him from scoring a 35-yard play and 111 to go. Excellent play call here against this. The you got to have an inside screen. You come to Riley, and there's nobody in the middle of the field, folks, because they're all rushing the quarterback. You have some receivers running down the field to occupy some of the defensive backs, but great play call that time by Les Kenning, the offensive coordinator, on the middle screen against the Blitz. First and goal from the six. 111 to go. One timeout remaining, and now you can actually run it if you want. And McGee does that. He gives to Lane, and Lane goes down to the two-yard line where Holt makes the tackle. And clock moving. Well, they can't. Kansas can call timeout here in this situation, but they're electing not to do so. They just want to put their defense out there and play. And Texas A&M, Bill, in the red zone this year, they have been fantastic. 85%. They've got 22, 22 opportunities they've converted on out of 26. 18 touchdowns. So they do get the ball in the end zone. They've got to have a touchdown, obviously. Down five. Second and goal for the two. And Lane, he's in. Aggies score and take the lead. 19-18, Texas A&M with 34 seconds remaining. Nice workmanlike drive here by Texas A&M. Bring in your horse at the end of this drive to push it into the end zone. Dvorsky Lane, his 13th rushing touchdown on the season. All this was set up because of Stephen McGee moving the ball down the field methodically. Short passes, just moving the chains, doing a good job of converting on third down situation. So everything doing, everything working for Texas A&M on that drive. And you got to think about the calls for, for Kansas on allowing to go for a, electing to go for a full blitz against that screen pass. And 
take another look here at the touchdown and the J train moving the offensive line. No problem there for Texas A&M to get in the end zone. So, yeah, the other thing is, yeah, Kansas sitting down here, you're in that dilemma. Do you call timeout saying it looks like they're going to score? We want to have some clock to work with. They elected not to, to force A&M to try to make a hurry up play. Well, hindsight's 20-20, but now you have 34 seconds to work with. Now you, you're always thinking you're going to rely on your defense to stop them, and you don't want to let them, let them get in the end zone or let the clock expire and make it be their problem. But, but now they wish they had that time back, Bill. And, I don't think they want to concede a touchdown in that situation. Well, for Mark Mangino, it is a three and two season, and those two losses, ouch. Overtime games. Toledo in a double overtime. Turnovers were huge in that one. They had five, and they lost on the road to Toledo, 37-31. Well, that a double overtime ball game, and the second loss last week against Nebraska again. Nebraska, they were down 17-0 in that game in a place that they never win. And they come back and force overtime and lose 39-32 in the OT. And here today, where they haven't lost since 04, a nine-game home winning streak on the line. And the Aggies, they're going to go for two. Try to make it a three-point margin. McGee scampering around. And it is complete as Thomas makes the reception and he used all of that six foot five frame to haul it in. So they get the two point conversion. It's 21 18 and now a field goal would only tie for KU. Great protection up front here. Look at Stephen McGee. No problems as far as anybody in his face. They're only rushing four defenders there for KU and that's just too long to cover receivers all over the field or in the back of the end zone. And good job of throwing the ball up there to his tall tight end. Joey Thomas catching that football. And Bill, that was an excellent drive by Stephen McGee and the Texas Aggies. AM Aggies are coming down the field and executing on you know situations where you got to convert to get the first down. Every third down, they converted on that drive. And as a result, it's 21-18, 34 seconds to go. And now KU. This place is just absolutely silent now after AM. Just a stunning drive. Well, you've got two timeouts left if you're Kansas, and the ball, the, the clock is going to start ticking, folks, as after the ball is kicked. So there's going to be six or seven, maybe eight seconds before, uh, you know, with the ball in the air before Kansas is even going to touch the football. So on this play, it's probably going to take you know, 10 or more seconds off the clock, game clock. So when they do go back on offense, I'd be surprised if it's anything, it'd be maybe around 24, 22 seconds or so. Kansas with Jake Sharp, the deepest man. He lets it go. And that was a good situation for, for Kansas to allow him to kick it out of the end zone. Like I would have kicked that down with the clock run and go ahead and make a tackle. You're going to lose more, lose more time off that clock. So four seconds go off the clock, and now Kansas, first and ten, the ball on the 20-yard line. Well, they've got to get it, probably get it inside of the 30-yard line for him to get a field goal opportunity here. That'd be around the 31-yard line would be of Texas A&M where he could get to his top-end range. And Webb had a game winner against Iowa State for that 48-yarder last year. Oh, wow. First down pass out near the 40-yard line is complete to Brian Murph, and he gets out of bounds. 20 seconds to go. Well, you got the zone the coverage deep here, and then, then Brian Murph's going to come underneath here on the outside. And good play design. You know you're going to be in a long yardage defensive set, and it takes up 20 plus yards in that play. So it's at the 39 officially here. So first and 10. The clock, the enemy, with 20 seconds to go. Barman. Fires deep and gets rid of it. Clock stops, 13 seconds to go. KU with two timeouts remaining. Yeah, it just takes time to get down the field, and that's what's against the Jayhawks right now. That took seven seconds off the, off the clock there. And good coverage in the secondary. They're not going to allow the big, big play. They may allow them to throw it down underneath and get five or ten yards. Remember, there is a timeout left. Excuse me, no timeouts. Kansas has the two timeouts left. Excuse me, Bill. They've got two left, so they can throw the ball in the middle of the field. Second out of ten. Barman being chased. 
downs the football. And there's seven seconds to go, and he was being rushed by Henry Smith and company. Smith, a redshirt junior out of uh, Aliceville, Alabama. Well, I don't think there's any time, enough time on the clock here with seven seconds to go where you can get the ball down to the 35-yard line or so forth to even attempt a field goal. This is going to be perhaps the last play of the game and throwing it towards the end zone. Yeah, if you're a and you're going to uh, keep everything in front of you. Let's see. Third and ten. Carmen. Escaped one man. Throws it deep. And it is batted down. And that's the ball game. Texas A&M trailing throughout. Scores with 34 seconds to go. And wins a thriller here in Lawrence. 21-18 Aggies and an agonizing loss for Kansas. Their first home loss of the year and their first in their last 10 games. And Justin Warren, our Cooper Tires defensive player of the game for his consistent standout play. Well, Justin Warren did a good job on defense for him. And I tell you what, Texas A&M did what they had to do to come back. Didn't look they had a lot going on early in the third quarter, or even in the start of the fourth quarter, but they just kept plugging away. And Steve McGee, I was very impressed with him on that last drive, Bill, as far as bringing his team down the field. Terrific for the sophomore signal caller. Let's go down to Emily Jones with a happy Coach Franchoni. That's right. We'll find out if he is happy. Coach Fran, you said you had some stern words for your, t for your team at the half. Took a while to set in, but they finally got the got the message. Well, we had to survive a tough third quarter there with them having the wind at their back, and fortunately did a decent job of that, and and uh, then got the wind with us in the fourth quarter. And all the points were scored down here today with the wind at your back, and that was a big factor. We talked early in the week about how your team would respond to having that win um, or the loss rather against Texas Tech. Now you return the favorite home. What does this tell you about your team? Well, I've always said they're pretty gutty and pretty spirited, and. Uh, you know, coming back and then Kansas played very well. Let's tip our hat to Coach Mangino and his players. But uh, our kids made a couple more plays today and hung in there and kept believing. And they didn't play very well at times, but uh, Kansas had something to do with that. And they did find a way to win. Coach, congratulations on the win. We do appreciate it. A win is a win. Guys, and Coach Fran and the Aggies got one today. All right. Thank you, Emily. Congratulations, A&M. For Gary Reasons, Emily Jones, our entire crew, Bill Lansing, so long from Kansas, the Jayhawks fall to the Aggies. The stories are incredible. 207,000 miles.